Hey gang, Jack Lair here, and I have loved RPGs for the longest time, uh, but sadly, as I'm getting older, I have a family now, I can't spend 40 hours on a weekend caffeine-fueled all night, still have time to see my friends, and then stumble into work Monday morning. I can't do that anymore. So, when I find a gem like Cthulhu Saves the World, and bundled with another game for only $3, I am supremely happy. You might recognize the name Cthulhu from the works of H.P. Lovecraft. And if you recognize that and you're familiar with Lovecraft, then a lot of the references in this game will make sense. We start the story with Cthulhu waking up after countless years, and he is poised to destroy the world! When a mysterious stranger shows up and seals away all of his dark power. It's only then that the narrator slips up and explains that his powers can be restored by becoming a true hero. Yep, the fourth wall is more of an empty rectangle in this game, and Cthulhu, the narrator, and everybody else in the game will probably break it at some point. Now, after washing up on the beach, uh, we're run through a quick tutorial and we meet Umi who is our first group character. We're also introduced to combat, which for the most part is like any other RPG, except for a few little twists. The insanity mechanic. There are certain attacks you can do and things you can cause that will cause people to be insane. Now for most of the enemies, this will mean that they will take more damage. So if you were hitting them for 30, you will now hit them for 50 or something like that. However, there are a handful that if you make them insane, their damage goes up. So be careful when using it. There is also the combo meter. So if you, let's say you punch somebody and you hit them twice, that counts as two, goes on the combo meter. There are certain things that will make use of this combo meter. It starts out with basically you just have a finishing move which uses up all the combo meter and does a bunch of damage. Later on, there will be things like heals and other spells that will factor into that and use that as a combo finisher. There's also the Unite mechanic, which if you've played Chrono Trigger, this will look very familiar to you. You basically can team up two of your party members and have them attack. At the end of each battle, you will get your full health back and you will get magic points back depending on how quickly you eliminated the enemies. So if you eliminate them in one round, you get seven magic points back. If you eliminate them in two rounds, you get five, and then it goes down from there. So while you can play this like every other RPG and just use the same attack and the same spell over and over, it does have a depth to the combat that lets you use different tactics as you level further into the game. Leveling up, in addition to the normal stuff, also gives you the ability to customize your character. When you level up, you will be given two options, and some will be to upgrade stats, some will be to get more hit points, and other times it will be a choice of which stats you want more points to go in. If you want physical, magical, or somewhere in the middle, this is your choice to choose that. Leveling up is done by what else than killing monsters. But here's where Z-Boy Games does something really interesting. Each dungeon has a certain number of random encounters. So what that means is that when you walk into a dungeon, you will see a little counter that says 25, 30, 35, whatever it says. For every fight you do, that goes down by one. So when fighting monsters, you can choose from to either wander around and get attacked as you normally would in any other RPG, or what you can do is, if you want to get all the fights out of the way and just wander through the dungeon, you can just select fight from the menu. You can also, once you've used up all the random 
battles, you won't run into them just by chance, but you can still select fight if you need to level up higher. Thrown across in the game are often references to other literary works or writing itself. Uh, most of them have jokes or puns somewhere in the name or the description or both. Uh, my favorite is the Hellhound, uh, just because that joke cracks me up. Cthulhu picks up more members to add to the group, but you can only have a party of four at any time. Now the upside is, is that you can change the party group dynamic at any time. So this means if you're walking into a battle and you know that there's going to be a fire monster coming up, you can switch out to the person that cast ice. The other nice thing that they did is that all of the equipment that you get is usable by one character. So you don't have to worry about who gets the magic staff or anything like that. It always equates to, oh, I got the flaming sword. That goes to Cthulhu. Oh, I got the flaming trident. That goes to Umi. The only other two items that you'll encounter are one-ups and potions. One-ups basically works the way that if you lose a battle, you can retry that battle right then and there, which is great. I like this because it allows me to get right back into the action. The second thing is a potion. So a potion will bring somebody back from the dead to full health, or just put them at full health. If you don't want to use a one-up, the other option is give up, which just puts you back to the main menu. You can then load and go right back in, and this is where the save anywhere mechanic comes in a lot of handy. Because a lot of times what you can do is you can just save, and as long as you've saved recently, not waste the one up and just go right in. And then save the one ups for things like bosses or particularly hard dungeons. The last thing I want to mention about this game is the music. Every place you go has music that feels like it fits. So when you go to a zombie town, there is zombie music playing. When you go to the town that is up in the hills and the mountains, there is that type of music playing. It works. And z -Boy Games was nice enough to offer the soundtrack for free on their website. This game took me nine hours and two days to complete. Now, I didn't do the extra dungeon because I read that it was super hard and uh, was happy with the time that I spent with this game. I also cannot wait to play the other game that came with this package, which is Breath of Death 7, The Beginning. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I highly recommend giving Cthulhu Saves the World a chance. And thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on!